Hello everyone, today I thought it would be fun to talk about how to paint abstracts with you, kind of go over my thoughts as a visual artist and tell you a little bit about my approach to painting abstracts. On my left here I have my abstract painting titled Night Glow. This painting is the third painting in my reflection series. I am currently doing a large series of reflection paintings. Here are the five principles that I like to think about when I'm about to do an abstract. Overall composition. Color, movement, texture, and shapes. Overall composition, what am I talking about? I'm talking about things like structure, the layout of it, where are your lights and your darks, how is the symmetry, is it symmetrical, is it asymmetrical, um, where's the viewer's eye? Where is it going to be going? How is it going to be reacting to the canvas? Let me talk a little bit about this painting right here, Night Glow. Okay, as you can see, in this abstract, I have, have a nice sort of symmetry to it. I have the light area, I have a commingling of light and dark here, and then I have the dark here. A great way to tell if you have symmetry or not is to do this. Take a painting, flip it upside down, and look at it like that. Does it still work? Do you still kind of see the image? Can you see how what the artist was thinking? Does it make sense still, even though it's upside down? I think it does, and um, you can see here I have the portion of the lighter colors here coming upwards. These are the reflections from the water. My original idea, by the way, for this piece, put it back around here so you can see it correctly, um, was the idea of looking at uh, city nightlife, and you can see all the neon signs and the billboards and the flashing colors. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if there was a, like a river running right through the middle of what would normally maybe be the street, but if there was a river right near where all the shops, maybe there's a riverfront, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe the Riverwalk um, in San Antonio, Texas might be a good example of this with all the bright colored lights. And they're all reflecting on the dark, inky blackness of the water. And what would that look like? And, it, and I focused not on the buildings and the reflection, but just on the reflection, and that's how I create the abstract. So it's, it's abstracted, yes, but it's not so far from reality that it's not actually depicting something. So it's quasi-representational, quasi-abstracted. Actually, a lot of my abstracts are like that. I don't go fully abstract. I don't go fully representational. I'm somewhere in the middle, at least for this series of reflections. Um, but looking at this, you can see that um, you have up here would be the buildings and the light, and it's just dancing across the top of the water as it comes down. Now, go back to overall symmetry and composition. For the symmetry, you notice, like I said, it's a horizontal symmetry. Bottom is dark, the middle is a commingling, and the top is the light. The next thing I have to think about when I am considering doing abstracts is the color. Um, I like high contrast. I also like very little contrast and the juxtaposition of the two. So uh, some of my paintings are very little contrast. Some of them are more normative, where it would be kind of in the middle. And some of them are very, very bold. And with my abstracts, I tend to go more on the bold, probably because I'm a younger artist. Uh, I like bright colors. I like exploring using the thick globs of just red paint. That's so much fun for me. You can try, if you want to do a more muted palette, it'll still work. But think about your colors. For here, I have a nice balance of really darks and really lights. And I said it's high contrast. I want that real juxtaposition of the two. Um, but I have the lighter colors here. I'm really, I'm looking at the colors themselves, like here, I am actually, when I'm taking my knife to do this, I'm gonna grab yellow, and I'm gonna just sneak a little red at the top. So that when I scrape it across this way, I'm getting some red here, and then some yellow underneath. And I'm making sure that when I'm grabbing colors, I'm grabbing like two thirds one, one third the other, or half and half sometimes. So I'm not usually, not always, just grabbing one color. I am allowing myself to grab multiple colors and, and load the knife that way. Also, sometimes take pure color, throw it on the canvas, then dig my knife, put a good amount of pressure into it, pull it back, and then re-scrape so it's started to mix and um, get these sort of mid-mixture colors. Like here you have the black kind of going into the red and then there's that orange which was underneath, so I did the orange first, and then I did this reddish black color across the top of that orange, which is kind of hidden underneath. There's some yellow there. Um, another example would be here. Um, actually, a better example is actually right here, because I have this inky black, just straight black, jet black uh, color I was using. This is acrylics, by the way. And then I took and put the blue 
and I put the blue straight on, so pure black, still kind of wet, add a little bit of water maybe, and then you can grab the blue, straight on blue, scrape it, scrape it, scrape it, get it kind of all on your knife, and then reapply gently, and then it'll get an even smeared blue effect. That's how I did that. Two things I've talked about so far, I've talked about overall composition, we have this U shape, we have this smaller U, we have these arches here, we have this, uh, there's a mirror of the arch here, is mirrored here, so it's part of the overall structure. We have um, bits of dark appearing, but overall it's large scale, dark and light. Number two was color, bright colors, I'm allowing you to pop, I'm allowing you to intermingle and interplay. Movement! <clears throat> let's take a moment and let's talk about movement. In this piece, you'll notice I'm doing reflections. I'm doing a lot of brush strokes. I guess I'll call them knife strokes. Eh, just with my knife, I'm basically my palette knife, and I'm stroking across, coming straight across. Um, so my, all my strokes are coming from right to left, I'm right-handed, um, or they're going, some of them are going the other way as well. Um, I'll mix it up. But they're mostly horizontal. There's a few verticals here to add some structure, but because it is water, I want to have a smeared kind of moving left to right effect. But for contrast, a few of these up here are going straight up. Again, next thing to think about is shape. All right, so the overall shapes of these um, add to the movement. I have the left to right motion here, but the colors are reading its vertical columns. You see that? So I have a, a dynamic crossing of the two where the overall it's a left and right motion, but then you have these vertical columns. So how does it read? Well, the color is going to dominate the overall motion. So actually, when I look at this painting, I'm usually drawn to this area probably because of the red here, contrasting with the blue. But my eye usually starts somewhere up here, it drifts over across this way, and then it's, it gets pulled down by the weight of the colors to towards the bottom. And that's how I like to view the piece. Um, I can let my eyes drift anywhere I want, of course, but that's the normal path, I think, is from here over and down, or from up here over and down. But you kind of end up in the middle area as a general rule, based on the colors. If you start at the bottom, you can get up and you probably end up around here. So thinking about movement, through the interaction of color is important. Are you creating interesting shapes with your composition? Um, I have these columns, but they're not perfectly straight. They're kind of globs and blobs. And um, for instance, this looking at these, like this is a nice triangle here. Um, we have more of a straight up and down column here. You notice that the reflections as well, they always start a little bit wider at the top, and then I like to kind of narrow them towards the bottom. Okay, the last thing I like to talk about today is texture. Of course, with when you're using uh, just a palette knife painting, when you're doing painting like that, of course you have a lot of texture, a lot of um, rich uh, globs of paint that are going to be coming off, literally coming off the canvas and just adding that dimensionality to it. Let me show you a close-up of this. Let me hold this up to the painting. You can really see all the knife work. Get right up close. Here we go. Get it. So, it, can you see all those strokes? Let me turn it. Let me turn it more like this. Hopefully, I'm not getting too much of a glare here. Can you see that? Oh, that's me again. Uh, across there. See all the knife. See the texture of that. Okay. So that gives you kind of an idea. So those are my five things to think about when you are approaching doing an abstract. I'd like to think about these things while I'm painting before I paint and things like that. I'm gonna do a quick, quick shout out before I end to Dave Usher. He is a phenomenal English painter. He's a watercolorist. So if you haven't checked out his work, I'll put a link in the description below to his channel. It's phenomenal. He paints, I think he does like a new painting almost every day. He does mostly landscapes and they are fantastic. His understanding of color and, and composition is spot on and um, it's just fantastic. I've been really enjoying watching his videos where he'll paint the entire painting um, in front of you and it takes about 20 minutes and um, it's just phenomenal. So check out his artwork and I want to thank uh, Dave for suggesting this video to me and saying hey could you do a video about how you're doing the abstracts and so here you go Dave here is what I decided to go with and talk a little bit about okay well that's gonna do it thank you so much for watching my name is Charles Wolf I'm a visual artist out of Raleigh North Carolina uh, my blog is impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com again that's impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com and check that out I see all my articles about painting about um, 
just being a creative person in general, having a creative life. I have guest artist features, all kinds of really cool stuff for you there to, for you to check out. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful artistic day. Go out there and be creative. All right, see ya.